Hello, hello, Welcome. Hello. Welcome to the Story Of podcast. I'm Jay. I'm Ashley. And yeah, we're chilling. We are chilling today. I will have to say, welcome back, because if you are joining on episode four, what are you doing? Yeah. There's Wait. three episodes for you yeah, to catch up you're, on. Yeah, you're more than welcome to catch up on the others. But anyway. It's actually, it's not like it's a, it's a kind of podcast where you have to listen to every other episode. You can kind of pick and choose any topic that sounds fun for you. Yeah. Um, and today we're going to be talking about a couple, another little mixed bag episode. Jay's hobby. <laughs> I think we're liking these. Jay's these hobby, bags. my hobby. We're going to talk about books for a hot second. It's actually so funny that, that we say... I mean, we do generally try and have like quite descriptive descriptions that I um, jazz up in there. Oh, yeah. That's all but Jay, by the way. The titles, if you find any love in the titles, let me know because they're no one scrolls past ours and goes, We find them oh, most that obscure. Yeah. They're, they're more just obscure things that happen throughout the podcast, if you haven't noticed. But yes. if you're a regular listener, like we know there are some out there, shout out to them. We might have some questions from them today as well, um, which is pretty cool. Mm. So I've got a question we can answer later from. One of our loyal fans. One of, one, of our, one of our quality testers um, our, yeah. that got early access to the pod Yep, and has been helping us. And they have given it. Iron out some cute yeah. little things. So thank you. I think it's got the stamp of, stamp of approval, but we'll keep going anyway. We want to clean up some stuff from the last episode. Well, not we not clean up. Ashley, me, I am Ashley. I just said uh. that in third person for no reason. Um, I mentioned it when Jay was giving us the, um, random laws and like weird laws that exist. And I said to him that it's pretty weird that we don't have any of the answers. And I don't know why. I think it was a missed opportunity for him to have not known the answers for after we speculate. So we're kind of, we're going to fix that up today. And Jay has now figured out some of the answers and he's going to. Well, I think we, first He's we should start off with us. first we should start off with your so we had some questions and like trivia for your throne of glass. There was one that we got wrong. So for the throne of glass oh, fans, because yes. I know you guys are die hard. So I did, I did, I did mention this when we actually had the pod, like in in the pod. I said I don't think that's correct. Um, we got those trivia answers off ChatGPT. Jay has no idea about anything Throne of Glass, so he had no idea that the answer was wrong. The question was, what is Selena's sword? And it's actually Goldrin, not the sword what, of the, Ardalan. The blade of Ardalan or something, um, yeah, yeah. So, so was it, was it it's Gord- called It's Goldrin. Goldrin. Yeah. I not told, not I made cauldron, gold. Go- <laughs> the like leaky gold, goldron. Like gold. Yeah, gold, goldron. Yeah. Well, I mis- it was my mistake. I took GPT. I took the G out of GPT and made it gospel. So I was like, and there's there's another the there's the other main sword um, that Adian uses in the series, and it's called Damaris. Dude, it could have said anything in that GPT like and you would answers, have it was and I would have been like, yeah, Anakin is he is the Jedi Order. So don't always trust Chat GPT. They can get it wrong. Yes, they can. Um, um, but yeah, so these laws, Jay. Yeah, the wanna, laws. <laughs> you want to tell me? So the laws. We had some weird laws. If you didn't see that episode, you're more than welcome to go back and listen. Otherwise, you'll get a short summary um, of some of the best laws right now. So these were kind of funny. I, I never, I I made another silly mistake of not finding out why these laws came into place. But I just had some funny laws I wanted to tell everyone about. So. Now I've found the history behind them and the first one, the first one being was why couldn't you clean up bird poo, bat, bat poo and seagull poo in uh, Western oh, yeah. Australia yeah. without a license. Mm. And it just turns out it's just because there's like diseases and stuff. So I was correct. Yeah. And now oh. I actually had experience with this because... Not with. I didn't get criminally charged. I know. With I'm like when cleaning did, bat poo. What? <laughs> no, we had a we've had a a pid, pigeon mishap at at work um, recently, and we had to get an exterminator. And he also said that when the the poo from the pigeon dries up and like you move it, much like asbestos or something, you well not asbestos because that you breathe it in. breaks your lungs. If you breathe it in. That's how you get the disease oh. transferred to you. 
So that's why you need a license in Western Australia. So if you're thinking of cleaning some bat poo or seagull poo in Western Australia, just be careful. Get your license first. Make sure it's still wet. S- make sure. It's no. still, yeah, he said if you just wash it down. Yeah, make water, sure. It's fine, make sure it's fresh. <laughs> yeah, you need a license in Western Australia to wash bat poo down wow. with water. Go figure. Um, then I also talked about why you can't object during a uh-huh, wedding ceremony in South Australia. In South Australia. Now it turns out that's been. It's not only that. But it's been a law since 1953, and it's actually just disturbing with any unintended behavior. You can be fined. Are uh, you sorry? You can be imprisoned. You can be fined ten thousand dollars or imprisoned up to two years. Whoa! Um, if you, yeah, you know, if you suggest, or if you disturb the peace, right? Yeah. Sorry. If you intend to cause. A ruckus, essentially. That is crazy. If you are conspiring to cause a ruckus at a wedding and you go ahead with said plan, you will be in prison for two years. Um, This is recognized... Oh, sorry. It says here, this offense is recognized as um, explicit language to, um, you know, serious behavioral issues and even religious things. If your religion doesn't agree with the marriage, you can, like... Go in. So I was like, oh, fair enough. That might be why it's in there. But there you go. And the last one was the potatoes. You remember me talking about the potatoes? <laughs> yes. So you can't carry more than 50 kilos of potatoes. Turns out this used to be a law around all of Australia. In 1946, uh, sorry, even earlier. <laughs> no, yeah, sorry. The Marketing of Potatoes Act, 1946. <laughs> Is what it's called, which is probably Australia's best law. That's amazing. Um, It was illegal for anyone to sell, purchase, or take delivery and deliver more than 50 kilos of everybody's favorite chippy. The potato. The original. The the one and only OG potato. That's incredible. Um, Unless you, yeah, were a member of the Potato Corporation, which was also, is also a massive Australian corporation apparently. Anyway. Offenders could be fined up to two thousand dollars, and some of them have been handed out at five thousand, which is amazing. You, oh wow, well, sir, why were you fined from potatoes carrying too many potatoes? <laughs> Turns out, the rest of Australia was like, "This is stupid." Sometimes people just want to buy fifty kilos of potatoes without having to consult a literal freaking corporation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Western Australia was just like, "Nah, we're going to keep that." Western Australia pretty much yeah. wants to be their own country at this point. So. Literally, yeah. And so apparently it's just the way their laws are done over there. And apparently it's been repealed uh, quite recently. 2021, it was repealed. Um, so until then, you were breaking the law if you popped down to your local supermarket, loaded up your trolley with 51 kilo bags of... Um, or 51 one kilo bags of potatoes, because if you get 50, that's fine. As soon as you go over, yeah. grab 51... Yeah, you stack them in the boot of the car, hit the highways. Wee, 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 wee. Wee, wee. You're a criminal, sir. You are a criminal. I am. Um, so that's cleared up all those laws, and that I thought that last one had such a wow. funny backstory. That's hilarious. That reminds me of a thing that I've seen. Um, I just only like I'm very late to the game. Oh, I just actually started finally going on Threads, mm. which is like pretty much Instagram's Twitter. Um, oh, X, right. but it's the same kind of thing. You just stream of consciousness. And I seen this thing. Um, a kid wrote that um, he's in America, and he his mum was in the shops, and the checkout lady actually said to him, uh, said to his mum, that she needs to let the supermarket know when he's going off to college, so that they can stop ordering so much chocolate milk because this kid. He, the amount of chocolate milk he drinks affects how much they order and they don't want to no over-order way. when he leaves because they've upped the orders because, you know, <sighs> they have crazy. like two-gallon things of chocolate yeah, milk yeah, and that, right? Milk. So, yeah, like they've, they've literally said to his mum that she needs to let them know so they stop ordering what as much. Heck? Can you imagine ordering that much of something Dude. for them, for your, soup, your local supermarket yep. to change the way they order the because hell? of you? It's so funny when, when someone's got like a, I mean, that isn't really it. I don't know if that's an eating disorder. disorder. No, just like a hyperfixation. But it's kind of funny when, like what our first episode had, where I'd eaten the cheese and bacon rolls. 
And then you do the math and you're like, wait, how many liters of blood does the general human body have? Might have like 50. I don't know. I don't know. Scientists let me know. And then what if he's drinking like two liters of milk, chalky milk a day? He's like 10. Oh my God. He's, he's like 5% he's chalky milk. He's literally 10% of chalky milk yeah. every day. <laughs> That's insane. That's so funny to think about. Um, but yeah, so there's some um, extra answers and some long awaited explanations of things, which yeah. is really great. Um, yeah. Do we head on through to our good versus bad? I think so. Let's do that. Good versus bad for the week. Do you, do wanna... you have yours? Yeah. I mean, I've definitely got mine, but one of mine kicks into the topics. Do you want to? Okay, I'll do mine first. You do yours. So I've yeah. got one, one good and two bads. It's not been a bad week. I've just got two things that are like mildly infuriating. Yeah, that's cool. Um, okay, so my good is I have I found on YouTube um, this creator called The Cookie Rhino mm-hmm. made a animated mock summary of the first Akatar book, which is A Court of Thorns and Roses, if anyone is unaware. I read that series and it's so fun. I love it. Um, really love that series. Sarah J Mass is just a really great author creates very good stories um but they did a cute animated story and it's just and it's funny like it's just it it takes the piss in the right ways right. of this animated summary and that was like 10 minute animated thing and that came out like a month and a bit ago she finally this week released the second book's animated summary and i watched it today and i was audibly cackling that's funny i was watching it on my break at work and the mm. girls would walk past and i'd be like cackling and they'd or they'd just catch like a certain like couple of words and be like what are you listening yeah, to <laughs> dude what the hell so it's so good is each episode one book is that what you yeah know? so yeah. so far she's just doing a summary of each book because um, it's what it's like a seven book series or no this one's only five. Oh, it's five Oh, 4.5 because one of them's like a novella because it's just like mm. – it's almost like a Christmas episode. But there's no pictures, so – No, so this is like series. an animated yeah, – yeah, no <laughs> no, so This series. is like an animated <laughs> version of it and I think it is the funniest thing. So there's one character that no one really likes in mm-hmm. Akatar. His name's Tamlin. Right. And in the, these animated summaries, she calls him anything but tampon, oh, Timmy Turner, literally uh-huh. anything that starts with T. Tyrannosaurus Rex, she calls him in one of them. Like, and I'm, and we, all the comments are like, I can't wait until you run out of T words for you to call. Because oh. so far she hasn't duplicated and repeated. Potatoes. Yeah, like it's, be, yeah. but it's so funny. And as soon as I seen that on my YouTube today, I was like, oh my God, yes. That's so good. Yeah, so um, I feel like if I showed you the first one, you would watch the summary and you'd want to read the book. Right. But yeah, we're going to talk cool. about in a, in like a future episode, dramatized audio Do you audio reckon the books. author's seen it? Do you reckon Sarah? I don't know. J. Maybe Mass has seen it. She's pretty like, she's like very online with the whole like the memes. What's or? up with going on? No, she's just like I don't know. She, she likes just to know what everyone's kind of doing. Just think of an author being a freaking meme lord is. Yeah, yeah. That would be so. Um, cool. it's like how Taylor Swift has like opened up about having fan like fake accounts so that she can stalk oh, her fa- fans yeah. without. Um, yeah. them knowing you know yeah, like and she'll that, yeah. and she'll invite people to premieres and they'll be like how does she know that i'm like a fan and it's like no yeah. taylor swift's been stalking you <laughs> that's crazy she stalks them back like getting stalked yeah and then um my bad vibes one's kind of annoying but like a good annoying because we finally got our marriage to forget in the mail it took a month yep. but now i have to i've started the process of changing my name on everything and oh my god God, some of the processes are so <laughs> frustrating. So, like, t- my license was fine going mm-hmm. in for my driver's license. New photo, new signature, changed it over. Didn't have to pay nothing, didn't have to do anything. Just had to show my marriage certificate. That was it. Went into the bank, same thing. Just need to change my name. The only thing that was annoying was I had to re-sign my signature for every account that I had open. So, I had to do it five times Yeah. for all the accounts that I had. Um, passport is seemingly okay. I got a new passport photo and a new driver's license photo, so I'm and happy. And they're good. And they're actually a really nice There's not nice many photo. people who have good passport photos, but you've kind of got a little smile. I know. And there's, yeah, I made it well seem put like, together. I made it seem like my natural resting face was like a slight smile. So, like, as I was, like, talking to them, yeah. my, my resting face had, like, a little bit of an upturned smile so that when I sat down, they didn't think that I was trying to smile. You know what's funny about that? I tried to do the exact same thing. She told you off. No, mine just came off 
I kind of have a little smile if you look at it, but it comes off way worse because I went straight after work where I'm covered in grease and oil. Oh, for your passport photo. Because I'm, I'm a, a mechanic. Yeah. So if you imagine some grubby mechanic going straight in. I told I him to clean before, himself and he didn't. Yeah, I went in straight after I finished work because they were going to close or whatever. Got the photo taken, got it back. I've got a smile, so I'm just a creepy, like dirty, dirty <laughs> scruffy looking dude. <laughs> so for your driver's license, I remember when we first came up to Queensland and changed our driver's licenses over, the lady yelled at you mm. for smiling and you're like, this is just my face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did have that. Yeah, she didn't, yeah but she well, was she like. She didn't yell, but she was like. She was like, are you smiling? <laughs> it's like, and then you yes, literally said, you're like, you're like, that's just my face. Yeah, that's me. Because even when you were a child, it was the same thing, right? Stop your mum used Jay. to, your mum used yeah. to like get mad at you when she was trying to be mad. She was trying to like grumble at you and like tell you off for not cleaning your room or whatever. And mm. you'd be sitting there smiling just naturally, yeah. and she'd be like, "Stop laughing at this. It's not funny." And it's that but is, it's just that is exactly where the certified gremlin behaviour began. Yes. Me just smiling while she's telling me off. Just mm. naturally, just yeah. Just a cheesy grin. And so the the fellas had a had a joke back in high school. Yeah, stop um, smiling, Jay. And then yeah, so that's, that's that story. That's trying to <laughs> <laughs> that's trying to gonna be a long process. Yeah, it's. I've already hit a few bumps in the road where I'm like, oh, I've got to actually go in to change. But I found a really handy like list online of all the places to change it. So I'm working my way through that. Um, and then the other bad is a sad bad. Sad bad? Yeah, it's a sad bad. That sounds like a town. We had to say goodbye. <laughs> we had to pretty much say goodbye or see you soon to our friends Andrea oh, and Borja. That was this very week. sad bad. Um, they're going back to Spain. Spain yeah, for Valencia. a couple of months. So they have been living over in Gold Coast and we met them as soon as we moved up. I worked with them at my first job. Shout out. Um and they are the most genuine, sweet people I think I've so ever lovely. met. I am so thankful that I yeah. have met them in my life. They flew down for our wedding. Yeah, they flew down. We've been oh, hanging out with them. They're so, so sweet. Fun. So it's definitely not a like goodbye. It's definitely just to see you later. But I don't know what I'm going to do without randomly calling them up, asking them to go to an arcade or go-karting yes. or like hanging out. They know for all the things. spots. Like I'm very much going to miss them up here in our Gold Coast experience. Um but hopefully we'll see them very, very yeah. soon. Good friends. Great memories. We yeah. wish them all the safe travels back home. Yes. Um, What's your good versus bad? Yeah, my good versus bad. So my bad vibe. I didn't actually have a super bad vibe. Um, yeah, I suppose mine was... Yeah, I don't actually have a bad vibe, honestly. <laughs> That's fine. You don't have to have a bad vibe. It's uh, just if you've got one. I think, the, I think that show we tried to watch, that was a bit of a bad vibe. Oh, we tried to watch Money Heist. Money Heist. We got, what, I two heard episodes it's, I, in? I heard it's actually great. The first two seasons Same. are apparently great. I've heard that it's actually great. It's just, just, I think we just didn't have... Vibe, maybe. No, we just didn't have the mental energy that night Pro, maybe, to watch it. Maybe we've got to give it another. Yeah. Because we were talking about the overdub and a lot of people were like, oh, you didn't like the overdub when I was mentioning it? And I was like, no, no, nah, nah, I like the overdub. That's fine. Because one of, one of my favorite movies is like All Quiet on the Western Front now. And that is all overdub when you watch it mm. without subtitles and you don't watch the original... French cast or whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't vibe with it. I think we need to give it another few episodes. Yeah, we're going to keep trying. Maybe it needs more than just two. We're not breaking up with you yet, Money Heist. Well, because, like, Akatar, you need to read the first two books to be able to get into it. Yeah. Like, Akatar, you cannot stop after the first book. Mm-mm. 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 You've got to go into season three. The second book. Of Akatar. No, you've oh, got to read the second book. Yeah. Second season book is two good. of Akatar. That's when Resane comes into it. Yeah. Or book... Two and a half, really, because it's there's no pictures, so it is a seven book series. We have clarified this multiple times in this episode, apparently. Uh, yeah, my good, my good vibe, my good bad vibe, bad good, great vibe is I love. Are Man. you are you okay? Yes, you I'm just fine. had like a stroke or something. My good, my good that vibe. Was a lot. Well, because this is a heavy topic. The Isle of Man tourist trophy started has begun. Well, it started a week ago. That's all I've been hearing about. And it's all you've been hearing out, hearing about because it's the two weeks of the year where one of the greatest races on earth, shout out to the documentary series that's going to come out, greatest race on earth is on. Do you know much about the Isle of Man, TT? Only what you've told me, which is pretty much pretty everything. Pretty much everything. <laughs> so you, you are very versed on the Isle of Man, TT. Um, I know they wrote, they, um, it's really dangerous because they ride on the roads. 
yep. through this aisle. Island. Island. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the country's the um, aisle, yes. And it can you literally never know what's going to happen because there's all these types of delays. I know people have sadly passed away yeah. in the race from crashing out. I know, like, it's very dangerous and, like, pretty much, like, the most intense thing you could probably ever do in terms of racing. Yeah. Well, I don't need to say anything else. That's about summed it up, so I'll – <laughs> Leave it to the next topic. No, no. Uh, I'll. Yeah. So it is. It's a motorcycle race, of for triumph and glory. No, it's. I won't make it dramatized. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> it's a motorcycle event that happens for two weeks out of the year. The first week is qualifying. The second week is the race. Mm-hmm. Now, they're technically both the same thing in a way. So you're not racing the other races. You're, it's timed, right? You're racing against the clock. So you're trying to get the fastest lap because around the Because there's, there's no overtaking or anything because it's too dangerous. Yeah, correct. It's all yeah. – it, they I like mean, they space them out Yeah, they like delayed starts, right? So yeah, it's like one person it. goes and then like the next person yeah. goes. So you can still overtake and stuff and you need to. Um, but, yeah, it's a staggered start. Yes. Because if you let them all go at once, which they also do in Northern Ireland, which is just Irish road racing in general, which is ridiculous, but the Isle of Man is like the famous one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just deadly race on like public roads, constantly going over like 300 k's an hour. I think the fastest lap around the th- so it's 37 and a quarter miles is the how big the track is. Again, don't know how. I think that's like 54 k's, maybe. I uh, yeah, the whole like and a quarter miles. I'm like, surely yeah. that would add up to exactly a certain yeah. amount of kilometers. So that's 37, 37 miles and four couches. Is that what it is? Uh four k yeah anyway. It's <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you didn't hear that, but I just very much rolled my very eyes. Audibly rolled her eyes. <laughs> audibly. Anyway. How do you audibly roll anyway, your eyes? The race has been going since nineteen oh seven. So what's that? hundred and something year, hundred and fourteen years maybe? Yeah. Hundred and fifteen years. It's been two hundred and sixty tragic passings on the island, which is very sad. But they keep going back and they keep doing it. How is there something like this on Earth? Like, it's bizarre. And it, it makes you question humanity's sanity. Yeah, humanity's sanity. That's a good rhyme. It, that's literally it. But then again, a lot of people pass away from other, like, extreme But the chances are, too, though. on average, that means two and a half people die. Not like someone's got a dead leg or anything. But like two point whatever people die, have the chance of dying each year out of the 50 competitors. I think there are 50, 60 competitors, which is pretty sad. That's pretty insane. Yeah. Yeah. But very, very cool. That's been my good vibe. Um, It's been absolutely crazy watching that. I've got my vote in for who I want to go for. We were watching, um, you were watching and I was crocheting at the same time you were watching that i was i was listening i was observing i was half i was half i was half <laughs> in it. i was half in it um this series where they like do interviews with the some of the races um yeah was that the one that was like no not the ad one no no there was no. one that sounds like an infomercial but the same year they filmed one where they follow the writers yeah so the one that, where they follow the writers mm-hmm. yeah and that looked good. Yeah. So that's called No Room for Error. So if you want a good taste of like the behind the scenes of it, you, like all you've got to do is look up Isle of Man TT and you'll see the crazy videos. Most likely you've probably seen them on Facebook or something because they pop around because it's absolutely ridiculous. Just a small little island. I think the reason they can do it is that technically Isle of Man is not governed by the UK or Ireland. Ireland. Because it's right in between the two. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty certain they've got their own government so they can do this. And there's a couple other races they have on the island every year, like Northwest, which I don't know. I don't think North, Northwest might be there and then like Ulster GP as well somewhere there. We have figured out that when we do a big Europe trip, we are going to plan yeah, it specifically to. so that we can be at Isle of Man 100%. when it's on. We have to be there. Um, yeah. Definitely like a bucket plan. list thing. And it is a bucket list thing for like many, many riders, but... You're not going to ride in it. No, just no, watch. just to go see it. And that's that's another funny thing. I've been watching, I've just been having it on the background during work, 
so there's it's crazy that the guys who some of the guys who ride in that who ride around the Isle of Man on these public roads, three hundred and whatever k's an hour. They like a couple of them have said, yeah, like doing the British super bikes, which is short circuit, just regular what like race cars would race on, but on motorbikes, they're like, yeah, that's crazy. That stuff is crazy because it's super fast. You're doing the three hundred k's an hour on a short circuit, but you're shoulder to shoulder to pe- with people like MotoGP. Yeah. It's like, oh, they think that's crazy. And then they'll interview the guys who are like top of the game of the British superbikes. Same thing, opposite. Those guys are like, yeah, it's crazy doing what I do, but I would never dare race in something where every year people just boop, click off the map. Yeah. Like, dude, oh, it's so great. But they've got so, like, they're so, everyone's so friendly because I guess that is there as well. So that sanity of humanity is so like bizarre. It's almost like that the closer you are to death, the freer you are. It's also like, like they that. know they know how dangerous it is. They know oh, yeah. how crazy it is. It's like how people free skydive and stuff, yeah. you know, like and they free climb mountains yeah. and things like that. They know that it's dangerous. They know well and truly Definitely. what they're getting into. But there's it's there's just something about pushing yourself to your limits to the point mm. where anything could happen. And yeah. then getting past that, oh. damn, you would chase that high for the rest of your life. Yeah, literally. And that's what I think it is for most people. Like I think even one of the top guys at the moment, he's like 40, 54 years old, 12 time. Like, Michael winner. Dunlop? Uh, no, that's uh, John McGuinness. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I heard his name Number a lot. One. I heard yeah. Michael Dunlop's name Michael a Dunlop, lot yeah. in that documentary thing you're watching. And he, he is, yeah, really fast. And like he's got a lot of family origin in there as well. But there's so many people that are really quick. I won't. I won't bore too many people with the subject because I would love to do like a full history thing on it. I think one day. You'd need to research that a fair bit. Though. Yeah, definitely. Um, that'd be cool. If I was to do that sort of thing, that'd be That'd really be cool, cool, like a single into like a single like exclusive video episode, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll do an exclusive episode. If anyone's interested in that, let me know because I like my race history. Yeah. But I was going to add this on because of the what you just said then reminded me of it. So you said, you know, they know the dangers of it. So this particular type of racing is called Irish road racing, the crazy 300 kilometers hour on public roads. Yeah. Funny, uh, fun fact, number one, before I get into the second one. Fun fact, they, I found out today they only close the course 15 minutes before the race is meant to start. So if you're parked on that course somewhere, like at the park, if you're at the bakery, on your local bakery, you're parked at the front and then you hear the sirens go because they've got like 800 marshals on the 37 mm-hmm. mile track they go yep with loudspeakers you know everyone pull your cars off we're gonna do the race in 15 minutes and you don't pull your car off they just tow it to the side and just block off the streets boom go race so there's like oil and rubber yeah someone could have left a chip wrapper <laughs> not that that would affect a motorbike going 300 miles an hour but 300 k's an hour but yeah. yeah they close it 15 minutes before and go yep event start boom and then you just go be so bizarre like sitting at the bakery and like oh i got my coffee or you order your coffee when they start the 15 minute countdown and then you get your coffee and by the time you're finishing it instead of the postman coming by there's 50 motorbikes coming by 300 k's an hour yeah that's pretty how crazy. bizarre would that be it just seems like another planet i don't know yeah it seems like a very foreign yeah. kind of thing but it also reminds me of like everyone who lives on the Isle of Man, mm. they they know that happens for that two weeks of the year. Oh yeah, I'm sure, it's I'm like sure. when it's like when the MotoGP comes to Phillip Island. Oh, same thing. Yeah, the anyone who lives yeah. in Phillip Island, they know that that weekend is yeah. insane. But it's also cool because they open up their doors, right? Like Phillip, they Island, know it. You go there, and they're all just like, "Look." We Even get if it. they're not interested, they're like, yep, cool. It's a festival. It's a whatever. It's a full thing. It literally thing. changes the it, whole dynamic of the place. It brings so many people to their oh, small yeah. island. Like, like, it is so good for all yeah. the small businesses. It is so good for all things. Like, it's yeah. just, it's almost it's like, it's like New Year's Eve celebrations go pretty hard in Phillip Island. But it's like on steroids for when MotoGP, MotoGP weekend. The like, whole town's just – everyone's just walking down the, the street. Because it's one bridge to get in and out of Phillip Island. And to get across that bridge any time when the racing starts or finishes, oh, it's gosh. hours. But so they even change – they add extra lanes they add into extra the bridge lanes. somehow. Yes. They fit them in there. So like. they um, 
they have this whole – it's actually a really cool system. So they have this whole yellow line system where they add in like normal two-lane road, They you've got like the emergency lane that can fit like – another leg, like width of a car and they actually split both like the the side going out of the mount uh, out of the island into two lanes so you've got two lanes where the traffic going through yeah. that they use on race weekend and i think that's such a smart it idea it's very smart and it goes on for a little while I think, it goes all the Philadelphia. way out to san remo yeah yeah that's right that's when it such a so crazy such a, i can't such believe a i know that it's san remo it's uh, the, yeah yeah that's You're because no. That's because I worked MotoGP. Yeah, remember, yeah, fun did. fact: I worked um, MotoGP in 2022 and just met all my idols. Um, and it's yeah, I was very lucky. Yeah. To work in a really cool spot above the pits. Yep. And the paddock. The, um. I was. Can I just quickly get out my second fun fact? Oh yeah, sorry. This was more related to what you said earlier. So just blah, 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 jumping back to what Ash said before about. You said the riders have to know the dangers. This part is so cool. So the type of racing it's called is Irish road racing. Mm. And there's some other other events that you sign up to that are just as deadly. Now, Isle of Man is the only one that's raced against the clock. Okay. I talked about short circuit racing where you race shoulder to shoulder with everyone else. Yeah. The other races in Irish road racing are exactly that. Shoulder to shoulder, they just let everyone go. Really? At the same time. But it's on public roads, 300 k's an hour. So this particular one, I think it's this one. It's I think like I'm getting this one. correct. Yeah, yeah. I know this. I know this particular thing is correct, but I just can't remember which race it's for. I'm pretty certain it's for the Northwest 200, which is like the second biggest Irish road race from Isle of Man. The Northwest 200, when you sign up, they give you two things: Irish whiskey, at 120 mil of Irish whiskey. Yeah. And a Bible. And they say, cool, good luck in the race. And is there a few things like <laughs> you have to have a will and stuff like that before Oh, I'm sure you, there's all that as well. Like, like you have to have But once these you things. sign the paperwork, they literally give you those two things, a Bible and whiskey and go, cool, good luck, brother. Oh, my goodness. See you later. And they just, they don't tap, they don't tap you on the back. They, they grid you up like every other race you would, you'd see on MotoGP or something. They grid you up. You sit there. And, and they just go, whoop, green flag, see ya. And then they'll release people behind you as well. So they'll race like two classes at once sometimes. And oh, it's oh my so God, that's mental. crazy. It's just island. What the hell? That's insane. Oh, it's so nuts. Holy I'd love to talk moly. to someone like that and see where their brain's at. <laughs> so funny. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. But very cool. So that's been my good um, vibe and also just a little topic for us to oh, wow. geek out over. Just wanted to. Blast all that out of my. That's pretty crazy. Brain, yeah. I really want to keep watching the the series that we started that No Room Fairer, um, just because it looks bizarre. And you do you see them just chilling in camper vans, like playing with their kids or whatever. And then, oh, kids, you know you got to jump out because I've got to get ready to scream down past the bakery at three hundred kilometers an hour on my motorcycle. <laughs> That's insane. It's so crazy. <laughs> Just thinking about that is so oh, crazy. It's, it's nuts, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Anyway, we'll we'll move on to the next topic. Um, oh well, my next topic is um, at the start of this year, I decided that I wanted to have a reading goal. Yes. For the year, and I thought I was being very optimistic at twi- at fifty books for the year. Fifty books for the year. Yep. That's it. That's a lot of books. That is a lot of books. That's a lot of books. And these aren't small books, I'm guessing. Like, no, my average is um, between three and five hundred pages. You get them stats? Yes, I have this amazing app that's called Storybook. Storybook? What's that? The new sponsor? No, no, <laughs> no, no. we're not actually sponsored. <laughs> it sounded like that. <laughs> that. Yeah. So I have this app called Storybook. Me and my best friend uh, both have it. Yeah. Is it called Storybook? Storygraph, not Story Storybook. Graph. Okay. Storygraph. So, Storygraph, she got me to download it. Shout out, Courtney. Um, <laughs> we have each other on it. So, we can see which book we're currently reading, each other are currently reading. It gives me stats on so much stuff. It gives me stats on how many pages I've read total, how many books I've read, what genres the books are, whether they're f- slow, medium, or fast-paced books, whether they're literally hmm. like eight different – all in pie graphs. It's so good. That's cool. 
And That's it very also cool. you can review books. So you put your color currently reading, and then when you re- read it, you can review it. You can give it like five stars overall, and then like predictability ratings and mm. what type you read whether you read it on kindle like an ebook or an audiobook or a paper book or whatever you can write down your favorite quotes favorite characters page markings the whole lot and does this give this you thing. like updates towards that goal like oh you need to read on track yeah to say oh you need to so read it says this many it'll books. say like oh you're falling behind try and catch up or you're right on track and right now i am to where you're at ahead you're ahead. Okay. Because I have read 21 books and it is the 1st of June. Are we like, this is like the direct midpoint of the year? The sort direct of thing? kind of, m- Almost no, mid-point. it'd be mid-June. Yeah, mid-June. Yeah, yeah. So you're ahead. So we're, we're five months in, like finished five months and we've got, because we're in the sixth month. So at the end of June, it'll be the direct halfway. Yeah. So if I read four books in by June, end of June, mm. then I'll be directly on track. Yeah. Um, so you have I been reading thought, a lot, and you're always smashing out the Kindle. Yeah. So I've got my Kindle. I read so much more in my Kindle than I read in paper books. Dude, Let's just this, say that for now. We were in. I think I pointed this out the other day when we were in the car. We we're going for like a ten minute drive, and you yeah. pulled out the Kindle. My, we had the roof down and we were like chilling. Oh, it was like a twenty minute drive. It wasn't even a comfortable drive because then I actually pulled us onto the highway and was like, Ooh. oh, on the Jeep, yeah. And we went the highway with the roof down and I was like holding the roof in the back, making sure it doesn't fly away, even though it wouldn't. But yeah, we're on the highway and just crazy wind and, and you're just Kindle. like kindling. This is a perfect time to kindle. Anytime I have like uninterrupted 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, kindle. Yeah. I bring it everywhere with Regardless me. Regardless of what highway you're screaming down. No, but 100%, I have read so many more books and I've, I read so much quicker, so much mm. easier on kindle. It is insane. Yeah. Um, so, so what's some of the books? So I have, I'll put it sideways. I also have this other app. I've just screenshot it off here. So um, if you are looking on the video, you can see it now. I've just put it up. It's just a really cute way to like Why, why am I zooming in? You should zoom in on your phone if you're um, watching on You video. can just chart what <laughs> books you've read. It, this one's called TBR Bookshelf. Um, TBR stands for to be read. To be read. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm not so, in with the lingo. Um, the first books that I've read in 2024. Are you going to list them all out? I'm not going to list them all, but I'm going to say a few. Just some of your faves. So I reread Fourth Wing because I read that at the end of last year, but I reread it in dramatized audiobook, which we'll talk about in, an, in a future episode because I really want to yeah, talk about talk dramatized about and just audiobooks. Dramatized audio experiences in general. In general yeah. yeah. Um, I read Iron Flame. I read the last three books of the Throne of Glass series. So Tower of Dawn, Empire of Storms, and Kingdom of Ash. I also did the um, tandem read of Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms. 100% best way to do it. Because those books run concurrently. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's buy, – buy this book because it's like book five – no, five and six or six and seven of this series. It's six and seven. Um, you've got so many characters that you're looking after and they split off into two groups and it's exactly the same time frame. All the events happen over. Yeah. But you would read like the whole book and – Empire of Storms this like ends on a huge cliffhanger and yeah. I would have hated to have to not know what happens and have to read a whole nother book about side characters <laughs> before being able to get back to the main character. So reading them side by side, chapter by chapter as they're developing, one, you're not spoiled on what the other people are doing because yeah. you're reading them at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Because like they're happening in the same time frame. Yes. So, like, over yeah. the same kind of year. Just from two different perspectives. Sort of but thing. it's two different groups of people oh, okay. doing two different things on two different continents. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you're not getting spoiled of anything and it's so good. And then I feel like it just makes it even better when they all come back together in that last book for the mm. big finale because you're, you've kept up with them. For so long. It was like keeping up with the Kardashians. It was insane. There were so many characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was amazing. And then I read like the last, the final book of Throne of Glass and I would literally have to stop my book, pause, because I was sobbing Yeah. about these yeah. characters. Jay would come out and I'd be sitting on the couch like, genuinely sobbing, like sniffles, like bad snort sniffles and everything. Like it was, it was a lot, but it was such a great ending. I want to read it again, all over again, straight mm-hmm. away. 
Um, I read all the Akatar books. Me and my friend Courtney, we te- we read those together, and we're messaging each other about all the stuff. Um, I listened to a few audiobooks too. So instead of listening to music in my car, anytime I have a drive longer than twenty minutes or around over fifteen minutes, I will listen to an audiobook, and I think that's great. So I've listened to a few um, autobiographies. So I listened to "I'm Glad My Mum Died" by Jeanette McCurdy. Beyond the One by Tom Felton, The Woman in Me, Britney Spears, and they were all great. I love an audiobook where it's narrated by the actual person it's about. Yeah. Yep. I love it. That it's is pretty cool. so good. And because um, do they add little tidbits in there of like, oh, and this. Da, 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 da. No, but it's just the way they. Well, you wouldn't even be able to tell them. No, they, no it's just the way. It, like they, they oh. read the book as is, but it's just something about what the emotion they can convey. Yeah, well, I suppose they're the one saying who's like their kind own of story written and, it and stuff. Yeah, um, I read the Powerless series, so Powerless and Powerful. That was great. People we meet on vacation. I needed a bit of a break from fantasy because I was reading a lot of fantasy. <laughs> so my go-to's when I'm over kind of reading fantasy is Emily Henry or Rebecca Yarros's other books, um, like Things We Leave Unfinished and everything like that. Great. Um, I read One of Us is Lying. That's a great one. That's like a murder mystery. Um, and I tried to read Light Lark and I just really didn't was like it. Was that the one it. written by the kid? Yeah, she was She was young, but not young enough. You read me a few of those and it was just super cliche. Like It sounded like a bad fan wanted fiction. wanted to be a poet almost. Yeah, so it sounded like a bad fan fiction, but nothing against, like, it's just not for me. Some people it loved ain't. it. But I'm not a big fan because especially because like Sarah J Maas wrote the first Throne of Glass when she was 16 and that is the most amazing story. Yeah. That she, yeah. But, but this was a bit odd. Like it was just it written just really hit. weird. I don't know. I don't know. There was something about it that it just didn't hit. Yeah. But, written really um, weird. Yeah. So I hit uh, officially over 20 books. Um, I love having my currently reading on my – Thing. At one point I had three books on there and my friend Courtney messaged me being like, what are you what doing? Are you doing? Oh, so she can, yeah, so she because can Because she can see, see what my that. currently That's reading right. is. Yeah, so she can see all cool. my charts. She can see all the books I've read and what I'm currently reading. And I had to explain to her that I was going to start reading one book, decided to start another and was also like, I'm listening to an audio book at the same time as I'm reading a normal book on my Kindle. Mm. Um, and then the other book that I've read so far this year, it's called... <laughs> I'm completely outing myself here. Um, it is a Harry Potter fan fiction oh. um, based on the Marauders. And I have read it about four times. You read this in school? I did read this in school. Yeah. When Jay and I first got together in a relationship, I was reading this. And because at school we had free printing, ah. I you printed it. I would print out chapters to read at lunch. Oh, okay, yeah. Because you couldn't take, like, because it was the school computers, right? Couldn't take your computer out at lunch. But you could print off. So I would print out for free using the the school's printer chapters of these books so that I could read it during lunch. Um, I've read it four times. It still hits 100 million percent. It is my favourite. It is my favourite book. If anyone wants to ever get me a, like, amazing present, most thoughtful thing ever – um, I would want a physical copy of this book. I want to learn how to bind books myself Just purely so that I can have this book in hard copy. Um, yeah. I figured out how to download fan fiction books onto my Kindle as an actual book so I don't have to go online to read it anymore. So that's really cool. It feels, it feels like an actual book. Through it, it is called How to Tame a Marauder. And 100%, every person I've told and convinced to read it have said it's amazing um, and I will reread that one until I die. It, yeah. That book is the reason why Sirius Black is my favourite Harry, Harry Potter character. Because of a fan fiction. Because of a fan fiction. That's pretty cool. Not even because of the actual series. Yeah. Because of the fan fiction. Well, you can you see what they make out of but it. But it's so um, good. It's if you think absolutely about, like, wicked, incredible. Think of like Wicked. Yeah. Like we're talking about Wicked. Yep. Wicked the first is, episode. Yeah. Like that's a correct. fan fiction. But it's turned into like this massive. It's almost turning into its own franchise now. You know. Yeah. So that's but my little cool. my little book book update as of the first of June, which is when we're recording this. Yeah. So 
my next reads, I've just started reading the, what is it? <gasps> Trials of the Sun Queen um, fantasy series. There's a couple of books out of that. I've got a very long TBR, but if you have any recommendations, I love the likes of Fourth Wing, Throne of Glass. I did like Akatar, not as much as Throne of Glass. I haven't gone into Crescent City yet, but I'm going there. Love some Emily Henry, anything like that. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. I am down on like the book talk things the and I have talks. like an an ongoing kind of notes TBR nice. ad. So like let TBR me know. TBR storybook. That's very cool. Story graph. Story graph. Same, same. But different. But totally different because that's not what it is. Anyway, that's the story of Ash's book thing. Now, we will go into our last topic for the day, which is kind of a game. It's more just us. I want us to hypothesize where Oh, yeah. Similar, idioms. similar to like the laws, but these are like popular sayings. So, an well, idiom is a popular saying. And like some sayings are like going out of fashion and Gen A, like Gen Z, Gen A. What the fuck is Gen A? Gen Alpha. The newest gen after Gen Z. The n- Newest gen, you guys don't count. Like anyone from like 2007 <laughs> onwards. A gen. a gen A. You don't Did even you not deserve know that? a gen. <laughs> Do you not know that? Gen A. Gen Alpha are who are like the- We're like, gen Alpha, bro. No. Bro, mm, we are gen Alpha, bro. That's really ooh, not- ooh, ooh. <laughs> Jay, <laughs> no, 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 no. that's not great. I know. Um. Anyone, I think it's like 14 or 15 and under is gen A. Jeez. So it's like middle schoolers- in America are like right. Gen A. Mm. Gen so we're seeing the last of Gen Z. Gen Z finishes in like 2006. So they're like 18 now. Gen A, you're in the books. That's fine. So a lot of these sayings people Gen A don't know. It's like that trend yeah. that I so showed you. So we're going to teach them. No, but it's like that trend that lot. really quick sidetrack. The, the trend that I showed you where people like stand, there's like a kid and then a like older person, anyone over the age of 18 right now, stand with like a wall between them and it's like, show me what a phone is. And like the f- the person will be like an actual phone with like a earpiece and oh, like a mouthpiece. Gesture. Yeah, the hand gesture oh, of right, like a phone. You. And like the kid will put up just a flat palm to be like an iPhone, like a touchscreen yeah. phone, whereas the other one will do like, you know, your thumb and your like a pinky shepherd, finger. Like up a, to their ear. Yeah, as in like an old like landline kind of phone. As well as like, you know, winding up the, like winding down the window, one will actually press do the, the press the button and one will do the actual like circular Even though it's still wind called down. winding down the window. Yeah. And there's like, it's, it's such a thing. That's funny. So I'd be You're interested right. to see who knows these sayings. Yeah. This is pretty cool. So we'll do this. And then we've also got a question from our studio audience that is not in the studio, but that asked a question. Anyway. So, our first one would be, you know, breaking the ice is the idiom, and you know, okay. t- to start a conversation, I guess, is what it is. How would you break the ice with someone is how you would say it. Why do you reckon that became a saying? Like, did someone just like I know, fall I, into I already, the ice? I already did actually know this one. It was that way, were they like standing on so a I lake and then like... One of them, as they walked up, just fell in the lake as to break the ice when they were like, hey. Yeah. Psh. I th- I think you're right. I reckon two people went onto an ice, like an ice lake. Yeah. They didn't know each other, but they were meeting, like almost like if, you know, George Washington crossing the Delaware River or whatever. Let's say that was like frozen. Yeah. Because he went at Christmas and it was. And then him and the other people on the other side were like, oh, how do you do? And they meet in the middle and they both fall on the ice and they go, oh, ha, 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 ha. Let's stop the Civil War. Totally fictional event. I feel like we're going very um, literal with it though. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's not. Would you like to know? Yes. Th- that's the idea of the podcast. So the background of that <laughs> is that in the 17th century, uh, it referred to, yeah, ships breaking through the ice to navigate waters. Uh, so oh. the ships, like ships, basically drive up the ice, 
and then break through it, like coming down. Yeah, right. They drive up onto the ice and then wait for the weight of the ship to break through the ice. Um, and this was just, yeah, it later came to mean breaking social barriers, but first it just literally meant a ship breaking through, uh, navigating through frozen waters because it was like Unlike driving the Titanic. up, oh, break through it. Un- that did not break the ice, that unfortunately. The ice broke it. The ice it. broke it. <laughs> The ice broke. The yeah. ice won. Yeah. The ice ice one tally. Titanic, Titanic zero. zero. <laughs> it might get a second. I don't know. They kind of want to build that that again. But anyway, ship law. Maybe we should do an episode of ships. Oh, you would hate that. Jay's That'd be so funny. obsessed with ships and like learning yeah. about like ships. The Just amount of times. Ocean liners The amount of times you were listening to a podcast that has like the full sound effects of ships. And like yeah, every now so and cool. then you'll put on like white noise to go to sleep. But it's like waves and ships. It's not even Shh. like. And it's just people in the back, yo, oh. <laughs> yo <laughs> no. ho. I just blew out the mic. But anyway, next one, bite the bullet. I don't know about this one. Uh, bite the bullet is to endure a painful experience. I would say it's more like jumping into something, you know, unknown territory, like, isn't it? Like, oh, know. I'm going to bite the bullet and just go and buy that thing. Yeah, that is. It's like just buy the bullet. Just, like, just do it. Buy the bullet. Don't even think about it. Just do it. Just buy the bullet and go. For that crazy dive in the yeah. cliff dive or whatever, you know? I don't know. It could be the literal thing that I think of is like someone having to bite the bullet, like a bite, like a bullet casing to like hold in the pain. You know how they used I to bite that, on leather yeah. straps? I think that... That's like my literal brain working. I think since the... the like in the war, they... The definition that I've got here is saying to get through a painful experience, you bite the bullet. I think that might be what... The history of it is. I think you're right. Yeah, like they they'd have to bite war. onto bullet casings because they didn't have like leather straps to. Because mm. you know when people are in pain and they have to like put someone's leg back into place or you know take out a piece of glass mm. or something that causes a lot of pain. Um, they used to like get them to mm. bite onto a piece of leather. The only other thing that I thought of is. Like, I feel like bullet would just break someone's tooth though. Yeah, it would probably. But I, th- I thought of like sometimes when you are you have a rifle or whatever and you're looking down the scope, um, not every rifle has like a magazine. So maybe they had to bite the bullet before they put the next one in and that was like them doing a suspenseful task. Oh. oh bite, bite the bullet because you're going to need to do another one after that. Maybe like after you shoot that duck or whatever that's flying, it, not ducks, but... Maybe if you shoot that thing that you're trying to shoot, you're going to have to give it a second shot straight away and jump in. And so bite that bullet. Bite the bullet. Oh, yeah. That's my only other thing, but I think the painful thing is... I'm intrigued. Tell me the answer. So the background, the background for that, yeah, spot on. So before anesthesia, <gasps> uh, soldiers were often given a bullet to bite on during surgery to endure the pain. I was absolutely How's correct. That? How's that? And I even said during the war. Yeah. Yeah, in, in war. Yeah. I even said in the war. Because like, they wouldn't have the like leather. Like, what, what date that would be. The only other thing leather. that I would say they could use, but they wouldn't, their bags weren't leather. Their bags were canvas. Yeah. You say like the straps of their bags, but they wouldn't be leather. They'd be canvas straps. They would be, yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? That would just hurt. That would, biting on a bullet. Ow. Like between your front teeth or like around the side? Yeah. Actually, I learned a pretty funny thing. With bullets. <clears throat> Apparently, there's a particular Aussie car. I think it's the AU Falcon, the Ford AU Falcon. You can use the fuses, like the electrical fuses that a car has that usually looks like a tooth, like two prongs. Yeah. Apparently, that particular car, you can fit a 22 caliber bullet in it, like a really small bullet. So, some people use bullets in their fuse box and they'll just be driving along. And then if that fuse shorts out... Bang! <laughs> I'll just shoot. Oh my goodness! I'm sure that's what would happen, but I don't know if that actually has happened to anyone. But Surely apparently not. they fit, and people use those electrical wow. fuses, uh, bullets instead of electrical fuses. Yeah. Anyway, funny fun fact that Side I got track. told this week. I don't know if it's real or not, but that would be. Cool. Yeah. There's no fact checking on that. There's no way. fact checking on that one because I heard that's that one not. from a. He was a mechanic. He's a mechanic friend, so he's a very smart guy. Anyway, next one is spill the beans. What do we think the background on spill the beans is? So. Revealing secrets? Revealing a secret is what it means, so Yeah. Why do we think that was? Spilling the beans. Maybe 
maybe spies back in whether it's wartime or just like political thingos, spies would come in and crack open the tin of beans and put egg, like, like put the- beans like so let's say I'm catering for the queen she wants beans and toast I put a piece of paper under the beans or on the plate put the and it says like you know get out really quickly because there's someone trying to harm Got the you. royal family put a thing in there pour the beans on top and then sh- and then at dinner time we go oh Better spill the beans, queen. That's me doing that. Better spill the beans, queen. And then she actually spills the beans off her plate and reads the secret note and goes, oh, everyone has to get out of the building really quickly to uh, save. Mm. I feel like um, That's the best I've got. it would not go past the queen's tasters. The beans? Yeah. Hey, why did this guy try and put a sticky note in your beans? Yeah, no, you're so right. The queen would, the queen would have like <laughs> three tasters that would try her food before she does. This tastes like paper. <laughs> and ink, because it was <laughs> yeah. cool ink. Why is there blue ink in your beans? <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel Just like- how I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, so um, anyway. I don't know. I feel like spill the beans. Would that be like a common thing to... Like maybe someone was like telling a real juicy story over like over beans on beans? toast over beans. Like back in the eighteen, I'm for some reason with this one, I've gone back to the eighteen hundreds. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's super old. This one, yeah, I, I doubt it is, but yeah, maybe they were making beans. Spill the beans. Spill the be- or what if like it's like how it just the only thing that's going through my head right now is how when my mom when you used to like drop peas off your plate. And they go on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> my mum always used to say, oh, my God, you just peed, peed on, on the floor. floor. Oh, That's all my brain comedy. is thinking about with spill the beans. Spill the <laughs> beans. Just- I'm thinking maybe like people co- collected beans back in the day. And because they get dirty and stuff, you'd have to like shake the bucket to get the dirt off the beans. But maybe like you accidentally drop and spill the beans. And now it's like, no, nah, you're going to get punished. And they would let out like their deepest secrets or something. I don't know. It's got as soon so, as, it's got as, so soon as you said field. something about like beans again, I, my brain went to then um, Jack and the Beanstalk and like magic beans. Oh, yeah, magic beans. But I don't think it's anything to do with that. What no. is it about? So supposedly uh, in ancient Greece, so actually further back than I was thinking. Wow. In ancient Greece, voting for candidates was done using beans. <gasps> Spilling the beans would reveal the election results prematurely. Oh. That is cool. Oh, I really like that. That is really cool. So, if you spilt the beans that were in a certain bucket or whatever, that was like, hey, you voted for this guy, put your bean in there, you would put your, I'm guessing like a dried bean. not like. So, if someone, yeah, like a lima bean or something. Yeah, a lima bean. I don't know why I went to a lima bean, like a kidney bean or whatever. But um, if you, like someone would, like someone would pay off a little kid to go and knock over the bucket so they could see how many each had. And they'll go, oh, it's going to be him. And then they'll all go and. Uh-huh. Do whatever they need to do that guy. That actually, oh my God, I was talking about something like this the other day at work. Literally yesterday at work. You were I was spilling talking, the beans at work. I was, no, I was talking about that a cool way to like not increase tips because we don't really rely on tips in Australia, but a cool way to like have make a fun tip jar would be have two tip jars and have like rival competitors. So like... In the Ooh. AFL Grand Final, you do like the two teams or, you know, when it's like Queensland versus New South Wales in the rugby league, you could do Queensland yeah. New South Wales because people would put money in which one they support. Or they'd spill the bucket of the one they and even <laughs> And even in like the Kendrick and Drake, Drake Beef. drama, you yeah. could do like a Kendrick and a Drake That'd one who when you leave. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that would be cool. It changes each week because at um, – my current job, we're talking about like doing themed happy hour drinks, like, you mm. know, Taylor Swift happy hour or whatever. We did like a rainbow happy hour, stuff like that. It's really fun to change it every week to like what's going on in the world. And I was like, oh, another thing we could do would be like the, a tip jar that was the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, because That's cool. it's like how it grilled. Um, every time you order it grilled, you get a little token to put in 
um, they have like four charity boxes and you put in the token to which charity you want a donation to go to. Oh, yeah, true. And you can choose which charity it goes to, yep. which is pretty cool. But yeah. That is very cool. I nice. love that. That is, yeah, that ancient Greece one. I love I it. I wonder whether we'll be able to see something like that when we go. Oh, we're not going to Greece. We're going no, to we're Rome. going to Rome. But similar, very similar uh, thing, I guess, philosophies and politics. Yeah, that would politics. be cool. Um, anyhow, so next one is let the cat out of the bag, meaning to, yeah, again, reveal a secret or disclose uh, something uh, that's supposed to be con- confidential, I guess. Cat out of the bag. Cat out of the bag. Uh, you, maybe people used to, yeah, same maybe thing. Maybe there was with like the- a cat burglar. And he was and a literal. To reveal that he was the cat burglar, bag. they let, let the cat out of the bag. Out of a bag. No, they let the cats. The cat. I'm just thinking like Corella Deville in like 101 Dalmatians, oh. how they like reveal her because of the coat. Yeah. Let the cat out of the bag. I was also thinking, for some reason, I went the, the bean route with the queen again, and I was like, maybe they had a shaved cat and. Wrote a message on the cat, or like attached it to its collar, and then they're like, "Oh, I don't someone's coming!" So. They put it in the bag, and then some guy was like, "Let the cat out of the bag," and then seen it had like a nasty message on it or something. No, I don't. I don't think the queens would have ever had like the world. Oh, I don't know cats. if the queen would have, but she's more of a yeah. I get Sheba, you know, I whatever. don't think so. Probably. I don't think that's where it's at. Yeah, I don't think that is where it's at. Maybe we should find the real answer to this one, which is in my notes here. The background of that. Uh, may it this one's not 100 percent by the sounds of this very well written thing um this idiom may have originated from medieval market practices where farmers would sell piglets in bags um dishonest ones would substitute a cat for the pig and if the cat was let out their scam was revealed (gasps) i was half right yeah that was pretty much it. So, like, scammers like letting the cat scammer. out of the bag yeah. when they would sell piglets instead. But someone would go, oh, I want two piglets. And they'd go, yep, go back to the back of the carriage, put a piglet and one cat in there. Or maybe two cats. Sneaky, sneaky. And then give it to the person. The person would get home to their the farmer's wife. And let the cats out of the bag. And go, what? I've got to let the cats out of the bag. This guy was a scammer. But if they'd prematurely let the cats out, that's letting the cat out of the bag. Wow. Yeah, that's a really cool one too. I like that. Hopefully, that's that. Just it does say that it may be that. So I hope that's real. I hope that's real. It sounds right. It sounds reasonable. Yeah, uh, barking up the wrong tree to pursue a mistaken or misguided course of action to go after something that's not right. Barking up the wrong tree. Maybe it was just after like dogs were barking up trees they thought had birds in them, but it's not. I feel like um, I think that was very literal. I just think of like a cat and dog chase. Like the cat ran up the tree, and the dog thought it ran up a different tree and was and was barking up the tree. And then the owner came out and was like, "Oh, he's just barking up the wrong tree. Like the cat's in yeah. the other one." But then I'm I'm also thinking like these things have to be very like widely. The last ones have been very like, enough widely, people have to say enough pe- enough people have had this happen to where they've let the cat out of the bag. That thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's just a very literal sense of sometimes dogs bark up the wrong tree. I think that's. I think this is one. If any of them or can be literal, could it be like people who work with trees are debarking them or something, and then they go, "Dude, you're barking up the wrong tree." Yeah, you're meant to do the birch trees, not you're the oak trees. You're debarking the wrong. You're tree. barking up the wrong tree, or it could even be deers. Deers. Scrape bark on the trees and that. I like the wood, like the... The, the tree one. Mm. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> this no? idiom, we're way off. Oh. This idiom comes from hunting dogs that bark at the base of trees where they mistakenly think their prey is hiding. They're barking up the hey, wrong tree. I was half oh, right. Oh, well, yeah, you were half right. It's just I said more cat in the wrong dogs, tree yeah. and there was a dog. I said a dog though. Yeah. Yeah. I was half right. Yeah. I just didn't say hunting dogs. I just said a normal dog. And the owner would come up and be like, oh, he's barking up the wrong tree. Well, at least I didn't make one up about the queen. I don't know how you keep bringing in the queen. (laughs) Some reason I keep thinking of idioms as like really, really old. Um, That one's uh, caught red-handed. 
to be caught in the act of doing something Oh, I actually know the answer of this one. Where did it originate? It's something to do with red ink. Um, like they would – something would happen and they would actually have like ink on their hands. They were literally caught red-handed. Do you mean ink or do you mean blood? Because I was certain it's like people who murder someone or back in the day they had it would something like, would stain their hands. Yeah. So I, I don't know whether it was like a, there was like a, a vegetable thief or something. It was something about like thievery or something like that, and they would it would literally stain their hands mm. red. So the one I know this from is the grave robbers of like the 17th century. Yeah. And they would. So there was a scientist who lived at the top of the town, essentially, at the university. And he would give money for those who had bodies that he could do experiments and surgery and stuff on to learn yeah. about the human anatomy because they didn't know fully everything about the human anatomy. And so all these people started going and grave robbing. Grave robbing was a big thing. So they thing. could sell these bodies. So they could sell the bodies and make money. And then these two fellas in, like, Ireland, like, hey, what if we just made the bodies? And so they started murdering people and bringing them to the guy. And then it wasn't till after a while they got, like, they would roll them up the hill in barrels and stuff. Like, it was just messed up after directly murdering them. They owned a hotel and then they murdered this person there as they're walking out. The person was like, oh, you're carrying, like, a dead person. They were like, oh, yeah, they just, like, died in their room and all this. It's not us. Well, your hands are red. And it was blood. Yeah. That's what I remember. I know I know. it's something literal. Like, there was, yeah. there was like, either stained red hands or, you know, it was liter- literally on their yeah. hands. It was red hands. Yeah. I just remember it from, yeah, the murderers who are trying to get bodies for a scientific... Advancement. Yeah. I knew it was something directly with like, it was that, that one is literal. Yeah. So definitely we're both on the right track. It originates from as early as the 15th century Scotland, referring to someone who's caught with blood on their hands after committing a murder. So we're both right on the money. It was just way earlier than I thought. Yeah. Way earlier. Yeah. Well, do we do one more? Do we do one more there, darling? That was sure. very British. Um, to, uh, kick the, no, we won't do that one. Kick the bucket. That's pretty, when no, people, when people go to the gallows and kick the bucket sort of thing. Uh, what about under the weather? Feeling ill or sick? Just feeling a bit under the weather. Under the weather. So I guess maybe cause the, that odd feeling you get when the clouds come over and it's like, oh, it's about to piss down rain and you get that odd feeling of like, oh, I'm uneasy. Oh, maybe. But if you yeah, wake yeah. up feeling under, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like, oh, you wake up under the weather. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Feeling a bit under the weather. Feeling a bit uneasy. Yeah. Like when the rain comes in and there's clouds. Yeah, I could stick by that. It's Sorry, like that, that right, right before it rains. That feeling where you're like, oh, it's oh, about it's to come down. down. Like you can see it. Yeah. It's like oh, you shit. can feel it because because under the weather, like you would describe under the weather as not being ill. You know, you're not quite ill yet. You're just feeling a you're little just, bit under the yeah, weather. Yeah, yep, it's pretty. like that pre, pre-sickness where you're like, oh, I'm just feeling a little bit under the weather. Like um, I could get really ill. Like I feel illness coming yeah. on and I feel sickness coming on. I, ha- oh, I think you're right on. There could be something to that as well when you say under the weather and you say you're going off, like you're going off the cliff, cliff into sickness. It could be that of like the storm's turning. I'm like right there, see where the weather is. I'm like right under that and I'm about to. It could go either way. It's going to storm up or it's going to get the really clouds sunny. The could pass. We'll see how yep. I feel tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think that's right. Something there. Something there. This one, let's see what this one is. Um, oh, we are so off, but that is so cool. Okay. Originating from nautical terminology, when sailors were feeling seasick, they would be sent below deck to recover um, away from the harsh weather co- conditions above, feeling under the weather. Oh, they're de- like literally... They're physically under the decks so that they could get rid of the swaying because the higher you are up uh-huh. on the ship, the more it sways. So they would go under the deck so there was no sway 
so they could recover from feeling seasick. Wow. And so they're under the weather. They're I not getting like the weather ours. on them. I do like ours as well, but that is very cool. That makes a lot of sense. I like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Because it could have, never know, that idiom could have been, oh, I'm feeling a bit, I, need, I just need to be under the decks for a while. If Imagine if people said that. I just feel like I need to be yeah. under the decks for the while. Some, some Aussie is going to try and I don't that think tomorrow. that would have caught on as well. Some Aussie is going to try and he's going to listen to this and he's going to call up work tomorrow. Maybe I'll do that. I'll call up sick and go, mate, I just feel like I need to be under the decks for a while. And then you'll get a New Zealand person answer the phone. And they're not going to take it that Under way. Under the ducks. <laughs> Under the ducks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, I have the special question from our guest uh, that I wanted to talk about quickly before we jump off the air. Let me get the question up first because I probably should have done that. So, essentially, what... It's the, in the Discord, though. Yeah. That is in the Discord. You might just want to restart that whole yeah. thing right. once you get the question. Because you still don't got it. Got it. Okay, so the question I wanted to ask before we go off the air. This is a question from one of our listeners. Yeah, from one of our cool. loyal fans and quality um, assurance. Quality control. Your quality control testers. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully he'll sound off in the comments about his answer but why isn't so there's two questions actually my bad oh goodness first question is why is tassie not called south australia it's the most southern point of the country is it because we really don't consider them human no no (laughs) we really don't consider them australian tasmania wasn't tasmania until it separated from the rest of the continent right you know people weren't here when that happened right or you saying when the frogs? Well, it wasn't found first. No. So Tasmania wasn't found when South Australia was named. No. I'm pretty sure Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, they were all found and named before they knew Tasmania was a thing. Possibly. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they thought that was the southernmost part of Australia and then they found Tasmania and it was called um, something different. It wasn't called Tasmania at the very start. It was called like New- Newfoundland. Oh, yeah. I think you're right there. So I might just do a quick Google search. Um, you need to start prepping these answers yeah. before we get onto the pod, dude. <laughs> yeah. No. But I think it's something like that. And then, it, and then it changed to, yeah, something about Tasman's land. Land. That's right, Van Diemen's Land. Well, yeah, there was a bunch of uh, wars there and stuff. So Van Van Diemen's Land in 1825. Um, then a bunch of people went there. A bunch of other people were there already. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So I think they like got together. 1901 was the entire Australia became country essentially um it became a part of the british colonies and they're like here you go now you guys can be constituted as a country and tassie was put in there as tasmania yes so um i just read a thing here that says van diemen's land was part of the colony of new south wales from 1803 to 1825 Hmm. um and then it became a separate colony after that so they would send convicts to van diemen's land um, between until 1853 and it was known as Van Diemen's Land because it was a harsher climate and convicts weren't treated as well. Tassie had some really crazy wars back in the day. Yeah, too. so um, it said, yeah, three years later, the colony was granted self-government and took on the name as Tasmania in, ob- in honour of Abel Tasman. There you go. Yeah. Pretty cool. And the other one was, so... Queensland, now that the Queen unfortunately passed away, will we be renamed to Kingsland? I don't think so. Could you imagine if we were it called wouldn't. Kingsland? It really Just everything, because you know the joke is like, oh, everything that was Queen, whatever, is now changed to, you know, Queen's birthday is now King's birthday. All this. 
Princess Peach is now clearly Prince Peach in Mario. Like all that stuff. I'm pretty sure Queensland was not named. Um, oh, you think it was not? It was not named after the queen that we had right then. I'm pretty sure it was named no, after no. Queen Victoria. Surely. Or something like someone that. Someone else. Surely the other Yeah, Queen, queen Victoria. I'm correct. Oh, right. There you it, go. Was, it was to honor Queen Victoria. Um, so it wouldn't change to king because right. that makes no sense. Because it wasn't even for Queen It wasn't Elizabeth. even for Queen Elizabeth the second. For thy Lizzie-ness. No, it wasn't even for Queen Lizzie. There you go. Um, it said, yeah, in eight, so it says um, the Australian states got their names in 1859. People petitioned to separate into different, instead of just being the British colony of New South Wales. Mm. I think it's what it was called. It was like the British colony, whatever. Um, and it said in 1859, Queen Victoria granted them their own colony and they named Queensland in honour of Queen Victoria. There you go. Because it was originally called, oh my goodness, that's interesting. So the uh, Queensland was originally called, the settlement was originally called Eden Glassy. Eden Glassy. A portmanteau of the Scottish towns Edinburgh and Glasgow. Oh, no. Um, and Thank it said gosh, we're not called that now. Yeah, so it said Major Edmund Lockyer discovered outcrops of coal along the banks of Upper Brisbane River in 1825. There you go. And named the settlement... Eden Glassy. Eden Glassy. Welcome to Eden Glassy. <laughs> That's Sounds very, very posh. But yeah, pretty much everything was New South Wales. Wow. It was the British colony of New South Wales. Ne- um, next time we drive through Brisbane, we've got to just think of it. Imagine it being called Eden Glass, but with Aussie accents now. Like we wouldn't be talking like this like we were back in the day. Where it's Eden Glassy. But now it's Eden Glassy. Because like, you say Queensland. But also, I just seen like, you know how um, when you Google something, it like comes up with like extra searches of like what other people search for. Mm. One of them is called, one of them is, why is everything named after Queen Victoria? Oh, nice. <laughs> and it says many places which were once in former British Empire were named after the British monarch who reigned over it for the greater part of the most dominant period, which is Queen Victoria. Yeah. So Victoria in Australia. Yeah. Victoria yeah. in Australia, Queensland. There's a couple of ones in... Which, to be fair, spread in democracy. Ooh. Hell divers. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> but it's just yeah. it's purely because she was the one that was reigning, the reigning monarch, when the colonies all separated. There and who go. are they going to name stuff after? Yeah. Like, We're still uh, in the Commonwealth. No, nah, it's just people pulling up on boats and they're like, who do we name it after? Maybe the queen? <laughs> like, yeah. Do this one after the queen as well. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, imagine Queensland, right? They'd be like, yeah, let's name this one after the Queen, but we can't name Victoria because sh- that's taken. Yeah, Why that's don't we a, just go like it's Queensland? Land. It's her land, like the one down <laughs> below, but it's the Queensland. Oh, oh that's great, that. mate. That's great. Perfect. Queensland. Done. Queensland is Lock on. it in. Queensland it is then, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. But it's – no, that is so funny though. Um yes. Also, I've just added an extra question under this just to make this long cast extra long. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Why is Tassie why do why even then? Why is Tasmania why has it got a nickname like Tassie? But like Northern Territory, we don't call it like Northy. Northy. Victoria is not Vicky. 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 You're exactly <laughs> right. Why why do we not have like oh Queensy? You going to bloody Queensy, are you? You're going Tassie? Oh Nui. Southy. You go Southy, mate. Westy, you go Westy. No, but I think <laughs> like no one says I think that, that Tasmania just, just get lump <laughs> gets lumped in. Like you don't sit there and you go, like when you go, oh, you don't go, oh, I'm going to Queensland. You go, oh, I'm going to Gold Coast or I'm going to Brisbane. You don't sit there and go, I'm yeah, going I'm to Hobart going Brizzy or I'm going to Gold. No, I'm going to Hobart. You go, I'm going to Tasmania. I'm you don't say hobby. where. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you don't say where in Tasmania yeah. you're going. You just say you're going to Tasmania. No, Whereas like, in Victoria, you go, oh, I'm just going to Melbourne. Yeah. If I'm going to Adelaide. We usually use capital. I'm going to Perth. Yeah. You know, you don't, you say like the capital city. You don't say like, oh, I'm going to WA or like I'm mm. going to Western Australia. Whereas yeah. Tassie's so small that they kind of just, it's pretty much it. Is itself as an entity. So they just get Tazzy. So they just get Tazzy. And because no one cares about it. Yeah, you don't sit beautiful, there and go, oh, I'm going to Hobart. Yeah, beautiful piece of country, though. But yeah, Tazzy. Yeah. Very interesting. That's funny. And funny enough, another stupid fun fact that I will add on to this. 
And then we'll in be my done. quick, and then there's there. Yeah, there's so many fun facts in this one. The reason South Australia is called South Australia and not Southern Australia, like because you got Northern Territory mm-hmm. and then Southern, is just because and it Western. sounded better. That's the only reason Southern Australia is called South Australia. But why do we not have an Eastern? Because that's the Queensland. No, but no, we have Northern we Territory. Had an we have Northern Territory. We have Western Australia. We have South Australia. Mm. Why do we not have an Eastern Australia? Why is why is New South Wales not Eastern? Maybe Australia? they no. Actually, maybe or that's East a smart Australia. move because f- they seen in other countries they were pulling up like Crips and Bloods or whatever, like East Coast <laughs> versus West Coast, like Biggie Tupac, and they were like, we don't want the same thing in Australia. That's so silly. Because in a hundred years, Biggie and Tupac will happen. Yeah, Western Australia, and East we want Australia. to avoid that. So yeah, so we didn't want the West Coast East Coast. Battle. That makes perfect sense. Anyway, just my hypothesis. What's your hypothesis? Sound off in the comments, please. Yeah. Let us know. I would also like to know, before we do sign off, that the podcast is now both on Spotify and oh, YouTube. Yeah. So I can't, haven't quite got the videos to work on Spotify. We're going to keep working on that. Spotify doesn't really like us at the moment with that. But currently, yeah, it's on Spotify and YouTube. And hit us up. Yeah, hit us up. <laughs> yeah, that would <laughs> and be And on that note, <laughs> yeah. we're going to finish this episode. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Um, we I've really had a lot of fun. It. It's 11 o'clock at night as we're filming this and we're having a lot of fun. Yeah. But. So um, I think this has been a really insightful episode. We've learned some things. Yeah. We've talked about some things. We've figured out some things. So, yeah. And what what about those exclusive videos? Maybe we might have some the story of exclusive episodes where I, I think that'd be cool where we talk about just one specific topic. Yeah, or maybe just more like insightful things where it's one of us talking about what we like a more in depth, more kind in depth of situation. Of some of yeah, the topics I think we talk about idea. here that seem to be quite popular. Or yeah. Whatever. So that let sounds me know cool. if you so want. Have let that. us know if you want like an exclusive yeah. of any topics that we've talked about so far, or yeah. any topics we talk about in the future. Just let us know. We can do like full histories of that stuff or whatever. But that'd be cool. Yeah. Enjoying it. Hope you're enjoying it too. We're having a lot of fun. And also, if you want to rate this podcast on Spotify, that would help us out a heap. And also, like, subscribe, leave a comment on YouTube because it really does help us with the algorithms and keeping this thing afloat. And also, we're going to have a guest coming up very soon. We've got a few people coming up to visit and we're going to get some guests on and I'm so excited and I hope you're excited too. Yeah, I hope everyone just jumps on, has a quick chat and lets us know what, what they're doing and we'll have some fun fun times, fun times. And if you're not listening on YouTube or Spotify, get out of our house. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I took a second to see you next time. Peace out. Love you, bye.